It's lunch with Gooch and friends, and I got my very good friend with me, Lauren Sacco. We're going to be talking a little bit about baseball. Yes, I've been educating myself, boys and girls. I know a lot more than I did last week, and I Googled it. So I'm right on top of it. No, I've been actually watching it. There's some, uh, I'm staying up late at night, of course, watching it. But before we get in there, I do want to send out my condolences to Miroslav Freitscher's uh, death, passing to his family, 1959 when I was born, uh, what a, what a dynamic type player. He was, he was one of those guys, uh, early in his career, he was ahead of the time. You know, he had that European, uh, flair to him. So, uh, Miroslav to you and obviously rest in peace and to your family. We send out the condolences. Uh, I am sitting in the Toronto Maple Leaf, uh, Winnipeg Jets dressing room. And the reason I'm doing that is they've called me up. I'm the goalie starting next week. What I've been, I've been absolutely all over Toronto about their goaltending situation. I never realized I may have to talk about the Winnipeg Jets. Come on, Hellerbuck, wake up, kid. This is real. You're a Vesna winner. you got to carry this team on your back. I should be the coach. I should get in there and do my little um, miracle on ice. Remember that? It was a great movie. Hey, listen, let's talk a little bit about hockey. Last night, of course, you watched it. It was ugly, like ugly. Edmonton versus Winnipeg, 6-1 loss. Uh, Connor McDavid, full marks, unbelievable. His third goal, I wouldn't call it a uh, goal of the year, but, man, not a lot of people can do that and move the puck up uh, top shelf as quickly as he does. He's got 81 points. He had three goals and one assist last night. If Not only is he the MVP of the league, I think he owns the NHL right now. Like he is the NHL. Uh, people are talking about him around the world. That's all. When I talk to somebody in Australia or Germany, the first thing they talk about, how good is McDavid? And that's really good because there's a lot of kids that are going to follow in his footsteps, and we're excited about that. How much better can a player get than him? We said that about Gretzky. So uh, I think uh, he has a chance to really develop this game. He's six goals only behind Austin Matthews. Can he catch him? Austin Matthews goes in a little dry spell, two games, boom, two hat tricks. Here we go. He's got 12 points over his last four games. Incredible. Love it. All right, listen, let's talk uh, baseball. I know that's why you came, because we've got Mr. Baseball, Warren Sacker. What's going on? Hey, how are you, sir? Good to, Is that a baseball uh, shirt? Is that a baseball shirt? Canada shirt, actually. That's exactly what that is. Baseball Canada logo right there. Okay, I can't see. It's so small. I know it's small. It's small, but uh, Team Canada actually in uh, in June is actually looking to qualify. They've got two more opportunities to qualify for the Olympics, the Tokyo 2021 Olympics. So they'll be down in Florida uh, competing. It's kind of dual brackets, uh, A and B. You play within your your round robin within your uh, your bracket, and then you cross over to the top two. In that, uh, get the uh, right to go to the Olympics, and then the third and fourth have to go to a relegation round, and they have to play against the likes of Australia, China, you know, uh, groups that also have relegation to see if they can get in. So they get two more chances. That comes up in June. You know, I'm hugely passionate about Baseball Canada. Um, Greg Hamilton, Jim Baba, Ray Carter, who just retired, uh, Jim Baba. Who is going about is about to retire? Colin uh, Dixon, who's actually uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, leading uh, that from a, an executive standpoint now, a former major leaguer with the Angels, great guy. Uh, it's a it's a it's a group of a uh, small group of passionate individuals, and uh, I can't uh, say enough for that group. And uh, I got a text into Greg as he's getting ready. I'm sure he's feverishly getting ready for Canada to go down to uh, to Florida to compete, and I believe this will be non. If I'm not mistaken, non 26 man roster or non 40 man, I'm not sure to the exact quite yet, but it'll definitely be anybody who's not on the 40 man roster uh, will compete. So anybody who's in the minor leagues who's not on that uh, called the Blue Jay 40 man roster at this point, I don't know if that's going to change or not. I don't think so, just because 
you know, the way we are with COVID now and the, and the roster shuffling. Uh, but regardless, it'll be a, a great caliber of baseball. And, you know, you got to get through the likes of, uh, you know, Cuba, the U.S. Uh, okay. You know, th there's a lot of great teams here. So um, a, lot of good Asian teams. A, lot, a lot of good Asian teams now coming. <laughs> yeah, there are actually. And, you know, China's benefited. I was over there in 08. I, I, I called that gold medal game. Hunjin Ryu, uh, you know, Blue Jay star <laughs> won gold medal for for Korea in, in 08, right? Uh uh, you know, and that team was guaranteed uh, uh, no mandatory military service in Korea based on a gold medal. So uh, don't think they're not playing for a lot over, uh, you know, Chinese Taipei, another, uh, you know, yeah, very strong did. baseball nation. Yeah. Oh, it's in China. Like I said, China's learning uh, from the U.S. And, you know, they they uh, they like, to, uh, you know, to, to be the best at whatever they do. And they've got the populace. So, yeah, much like you've seen in other sports and basketball and others and speed skating they're they're coming along. Gooch, you know that, uh, you know, they they can uh, they can learn with the best of them. And, uh, you know, it's 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 actually exciting for the global game. Well, listen, uh, obviously it was Paul Rose's birthday yesterday at 61. I'm going to be 62 on Friday. And uh, that's why I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing how big the logo was. And it was, <laughs> thank you for showing it, uh, Val. It's a cool logo. And uh, obviously anything Canada sells. And we love the fact that you're so passionate about it. Uh, but talk to do you honestly believe, before we get into Blue Jays, do you honestly believe there's going to be a Tokyo Olympics? Like it's going into its third wave, just like we are. The variance has gone through the roof. They're doing everything they possibly can. Do you think they can control it and there will be Tokyo Games? I would, I would say personally, uh, playing baseball in Japan, uh, uh, friends with many Japanese um, individuals, both uh, from a professional standpoint, from an athletic standpoint. If anybody, and I mean anybody in this world, can mobilize and come together as a group, it's the Japanese. Right. And if uh, if there's a will, there's a way. I, I, I firmly believe that even if they have to go about this with uh, you know limited uh, fans in the stands, they're going to make it happen. I, I, I firmly believe they will make it happen. I, uh, I could be wrong, of course. <laughs> that, that wouldn't be the first uh, ever. But I, I just think of a nation that's passionate about their sports. And I, you know, uh, very fortunate that baseball is back in the Olympics for these games that won't be in Paris in 2024. Um, yeah, you could you could push this another year. But boy, I, I tell you, that's um, that would be a difficult one when you go on another two year cycle. Uh, it's certainly very doable. Uh, and it is your your default if you have to. But uh, I can tell you right now, with the you know the endorsements, with the um, you know the, the the level of competing, and and you don't want these athletes, right? Like there's a shelf life for certain sports. I think of gymnastics and others. You don't want to rob an individual if you don't have to uh, an opportunity to compete in Olympic Games. I think about some of those athletes in Cuba and Russia, and you know the boycotts right of the Olympics. Um, it's difficult, but I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed that there will be a games this year. Yeah, and we uh, wish the best, of course. And I don't think there's an option of moving it back. I think I was reading something about the fact that if it doesn't go off, they're probably not going to extend it. So hopefully, for not only all the investment and time and energy on uh, on on the Japanese front, also the athletes, as you said, yeah. with their shelf life. Hey, let's let's get into baseball right off the bat. Uh, I got to ask you this question because he's just popped on Matthew Meisner, a huge baseball fan. He wants to know when are the blue Blue Jays moving to uh, to Buffalo. Just we're, we're going to go sidetrack. I just want: are yeah. they or are they not? Just yes or no. Yeah, they will. Okay, it's just, they, they're go not going to they're not going to sit in the steaming uh, heat of uh, of uh, Dunedin all, all season. All right, so they'll be called the Buffalo Blue Jays, just like the Manitoba Golden Knights. Uh, Scott Taylor has named them. All right, let's walk, let's talk a little bit about uh, MLB right now, and then we'll get into the Blue Jays, the Yankees. What is wrong with that ship? I, I, I heard that Yankees are going to steal it. I know that I'm I'm spending more time watching baseball than I ever have. Uh, obviously, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that LA Dodgers uh, San Diego Padres series. That's been just electric, and it's not even close to the World Series yet. And you know we got firecrackers going off. Talk to me about the Yankees. What is going on there? Uh, this is about uh, a number of players who have been you know 
proposed to be and uh, uh, vaunted to be, you know, the next coming, right? Uh, you think of the Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton's. They're hitting 203 as a team. I mean, that's uh, uh, Gary Sanchez, their catcher, hasn't had a home run since the second game. Uh, it, it's a lot of promise. And, and Gooch, I've told you this before. When your players don't perform to or above their contract level and you have a high – contract or a high payroll uh, it's very difficult uh, for you to win and you know it becomes frustrating because on teams uh, whether they like it or not there becomes a bunch of finger pointing uh, and it becomes finger pointing between the offense the defense and the pitching and you could almost say offense defense where pitching staff say hey where's my support right i'm going out and i'm throwing whatever five seven shutout innings or i'm giving up one or two runs but yet I'm not getting, you know, the return for that. And that becomes something that starts to fester. And, you know, I never like to see a team where, you know, players don't um, don't hustle. Um, the minimum you can do is hustle. You know, we, we, we've seen recently, you know, some of the lack of hustle uh, on, the, on, on this uh, organization. Uh, it becomes a bit of a, uh, 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 an issue. In, in the clubhouse, in the locker room. And um, no, nobody likes that, uh, especially when you're a manager. And Aaron Boone, is a he's a fabulous individual. Yes. And if anybody's watched him, if you've seen him when he was a broadcaster, have you seen his uh, uh, takes on batting stances from all different major leaguers? He is absolutely as engaging an individual as you will come by. And I know it's got to be difficult on him. Look, he already went through a heart uh, procedure already this year. That that's <laughs> that's like running. You know, that's like being the president of the United States. You see the president when he goes in. You see when he comes out. The gray hairs are plenty. And uh, you know, obviously not with Joe Biden. He had gray going in already, but. It's a very, very high-pressure situation. A lot of that is how you deal with it. And um, listen, I, uh, it's so early. It is still an early sampling. Okay, let's not uh, let's not get too excited about anything here. The Yankees are yeah. going to be around, but right now, you know, they they struggle getting out of the gate. Very good analogy between the president of the United States and being the manager of the New York. <laughs> With saving grace a little bit, you don't have as many fans booing and throwing stuff at you. I found that crazy that we're throwing baseballs or whatever out there. Yeah. yeah. You know, that, those are amazing. It wasn't hot dogs. Hey, listen, uh, obviously with the with that territory comes, you mentioned about the pre president of the United States. Trump actually came out looking younger. Uh, he didn't do much. <laughs> um, let's go to the bat flip. Obviously, we know our famous bat flip here, uh, but uh, Trevor Bowers' comment with the bat flip from uh, our friend, I guess it's Fernando uh, Tatis, I guess you call it. Tatis, Tatis. Fernando Tatis Jr. Jr. Yeah, Nando, they, they, almost, Nando they, call they call it. Almost got that name, Tatis. Junior, um, you thought that uh, Trevor Bauer would be the typical, you know, he's an asshole, why is he doing? But he actually, I thought he handled it really well because, you know what, sport needs to be a little bit in, more enjoying and not so serious, though it's serious for the players. But for the fans, we love to see that, you know, and, and people criticize you having a personality in the game. These are not robots. And that whole series has just gone electric, uh, fireworks. Uh, yeah. What were your t what's your take? You're a pro. You were a pro baseball player, so I'd love to hear your take on it. Is it showmanship or is it hey, let's get some excitement back into these games? Listen, it is about getting excitement. Uh, no doubt, I come from a different area uh, era of playing, but even I've embraced uh, some of the the, the new antics. Um, you know, within reason too, right? It has to be. Uh, it has to be, uh, we'll say, contextually aware. You have to be able to know when a, black, a bat flip is uh, apropos versus not. And, you know, in a seven nothing blowout to flip your bat, uh, you know that you're kind of calling yourself out there, and you're almost inviting yourself to be plunked uh, when you do something like that. But when you're in a heated series and as tight as that that series was, and you could see, I mean, you could see Eric Hosmer. Um, you know, having some fun. He had a screamer back up the middle at Bauer, knocked him on his keister, right? It almost uh, took his head off and went off his shoulder. And you can see the laughing between them, the two of them. Like, you know, they these are professionals, right? They get it. Trevor Bauer is about entertainment. Like him or, or, or hate him uh, or love him or hate him. Um, he, he, he brings, he puts himself out there, right? He's not afraid to put himself
himself out there on the big stage. Um, never been that's never been my mo, but as a fan, and when I'm trying to attract uh, visitors and eyeballs to my game and new uh, individuals to capture the game. I think this is the type of interaction you're looking for and it's character. And I, and I guess one thing, Gooch, that I, I relate baseball to other sports is that on the world stage, if you look at the number of most recognizable athletes, um, you will not find Mark, Mike Trout anywhere on that list. I don't know whether he'd make the top 100 most recognizable athletes in the world. You know, he may, but if you think of LeBron James or you think of Neymar or you think of Lewis Hamilton, I mean, you know right away uh, those sports and you know exactly who they are. And once yes. again, there's more obviously global game playing, you know, fo footy or soccer. So I get it. Baseball is not there. Um, you know, hockey. Hockey battles with this too, right? I mean, hockey battles from that blue collar kind of shut up, do your job, yeah. you know, don't yeah, don't overshow sure. anybody, right? Like, like Gooch, come on, that's that's been you know. I was never like hockey. that. I was never What's like that? that. I was I was never <laughs> like that. The blue collar. I was always my mouth was open before the game was over. So, <laughs> but Alexander Ovechkin, right? I mean, he yep. he's brought a flair, right? I mean, and and he's colorful and. Um, you know, you, you know, you, you see these athletes uh, like, I mean, I love Sid. I really do. I mean, I, I, I've been in, in Atlanta, Canada a number of times. I know people who know him very well, um, you know, but he is so vanilla and, and, and nothing against vanilla. I really, truly get it. I, I'm OK with it. But when you're trying to sell a game and you've got a new television package and you're trying to promote the game, listen, the, these um, these battles between teams are what we crave. We crave. Red Sox Yankees, you know, we don't really have it now because, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll say it's always there, but it's not as as sparked with, um, you know, the 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 flare and the fire that comes between the Dodgers and San Diego, because San Diego has gone out and said, we're basically going to buy our way to a championship. And yeah. they've gone all in on the Manny Machados and now with Tatis, um, you know, so it's going to be it's going to be very interesting. And. You, you know, it's early days in this series, but, you know, San Diego left a little message by winning that series. And right now the Dodgers, uh, you know, are tied for the best record in baseball, but uh, it, it just ramps up the, the viewership going down the rest of the season. You never get too much Tatis. I want to talk about his two home runs, obviously, in a second here. But I do want to say about the Sid comment. One of the things that we know, and you know now, Warren, because you've gone through it, a guy like Sid has to be very careful. His words have to be chosen because he has a lot of, lot of sponsorship. He went through the IMG understanding of this, right? You've got to be very careful what you post on your on your Instagram, or you, he, you know, he Sid can't be going out and doing TikTok yet. Ovechkin could because that's a whole different animal. Right. So I think that that's in fairness to a guy like him. I think they have to pick their spots. But in baseball, you're 100 percent right. You know, it's a world sport now and they need that 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 attraction to go above the other bigger sports. And I, I think the bat flip, I, I just love it. I, I, I don't think it's arrogance. And I think you put it in proper context. Know when to do it. You're 100% yeah. you're right there. Listen, let's go to Fernando hitting two home runs on the same day. I think it was 22 years uh, earlier, his father hit two grand slams. Talk to us about that. That is an, you know, when you think about the amazing things that's happened in the world, that one's got to be right up there. I think he's one of uh, two or three players in San Diego that's had multi home run games uh, within, you know, at Dodger Stadium. Uh, and, and I believe, what did he go out of there with five home runs? I don't think Barry Bonds even did that at Dodger Stadium. So uh, no doubt he's battling a left shoulder ailment. He's probably, you know, fully ramped up with your your latest and greatest painkiller. Um, you know, he's going to play as long as he can with that left shoulder. Uh, you know, it's sub black strike, so it pops in and out. I mean, that, that's difficult. You, you really actually need rest for that. So he's actually doing more harm than good. But listen, he's going to go as long as he can. He, he's a catalyst. I will say, though, defensively, he has not been a stalwart. I mean, that San Diego team is a trouble defensively. And uh, Fernando Tatis has, I, I, I think a lot of it has to do 
with the injury just because, you know, it's his glove hand. So being able to extend and being able to, you know, properly feel that, that you know, there can be challenges there versus swinging the bat, uh, which is a little bit more free flowing. Once you get it going, the, you know, the defensive side could be challenging. So interesting to see. I, I'm loving it. I, I, you know, you see the peekaboo, right? He puts his hand over, over yeah. his uh, helmet. That was so fun to watch that I, I i just watched the back and forth and you can see you know just the these two teams just both with stallions right i mean all kinds of stallions on this see i'm really enjoying uh watching the dodgers too i think they've got some great young talent uh, on that team as well and uh i'm really really impressed with you know justin turner coming back doing what he's doing he's such a stalwart what a boy the jays would love to have a, a turner at third base wouldn't you love to have him at third base i mean just a rock right a great oh yeah a personality. great personality um I've always loved Dave Roberts. I mean, back when he stole that base when he was with the Red Sox, when, you know, Red Sox beat the Evil Empire in 04, uh, beat the Yankees. I thought Dave Roberts, I always was really impressed with him. I believe he's a no nonsense kind of individual, um, you know, a true leader, somebody that players can relate to. Love what he's done there. I, I just think he's really got his finger on the pulse um, there. He's got Mark Pryor as pitching coach, right? We all remember Pryor from his days with the Cubs, you know, one of the stalwarts of the USC, perfect pitching mechanics. Doing it now at the big league level, a um, lot, lot of fun there. And then listen, this 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 team in San Diego who's saying, listen, you know, why not us, right? And that rivalry between 100%. which is what is it? It's less than an hour drive. Well, probably more than an hour drive with California traffic. But uh, I've done that trek before. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I got to say, if you're a baseball fan or you have any inkling of watching. Uh, you know, uh, some baseball uh, down the stretch, um, you know, stay up a little bit later and and watch this series because it's uh, I, I'm finding myself staying up later and watching each. And, well, and, and, and it's really becoming a big rivalry, just as Val has mentioned. But uh, the peekaboo thing, was that uh, anything to do with uh, Bowers pitch versus the Padres when he uh, in spring training, he closed one eye for a batter. Val brought that up. Is that what, why do you do the peekaboo? Well, um that could be it. I now I was under the understanding that that was from kind of looking down into the um, you know uh, to the catcher to try to maybe steal a signal. Now I could be wrong. Okay. Um, I had heard that it might be that, so I'm not going to profess exactly. Yeah, no before, worries. Yeah, but, uh, they didn't really go into it that much on the broadcast, uh, or at least the part I watched. So whatever, it was uh, a bit of showmanship. Uh, I'm okay with it. All right, so now you were talking about, obviously, about the Olympics and all these, uh, you know, they're opening up and hopefully they can maybe not have as many fans. Just look at this number right here. Val's going to pull the picture up. Last week, AFL match in Melbourne had 78,000 people. That's not from last year. That's from last week. Yeah. So the reason why I bring that up, obviously baseball is being a lot more liberal. They're, they're allowing a lot of their ballparks to bring people in. Uh, as you know, again, this is not a show to do, dispute COVID and all the effects that it has on us, but we, we're not out of this thing. Like we're still pretty entrenched in it. Uh, are you at all concerned as the season goes on, if we don't get this under control, that they may have to pull back on some of these uh, stadiums with fans in it. Obviously, Australia is a little bit different as in New Zealand. We're hoping that Tokyo can get under control so fans can see it. But baseball can live without fans, I assume. Yeah, I can. They showed they can do it in a sprint last year with a shortened season, 60 games. Um, no reason that they that, listen. They want a viewership. They want eyeballs. They if if they have to go back to less fans. I don't know. In the U.S., it just seems to be a different world. I mean, I just got invited to a wedding down in the U.S. in Florida, like for May 15th. And like, no way. And, you know, the border's closed. We're not going. And, you know, I don't have my vaccine. My wife and I are on the waiting list. We're still take it very seriously. You know, I, I even thought about going and seeing somebody, you know, today, a, a friend. And, and I said, no, I don't want to. Even though he has the vaccine, he's in a hot spot. You never know, right? Like yeah, I, had colleague, I had a I had a colleague, I had a colleague who came down with COVID, and he, everybody reacts differently. And I think if we if we kind of remove ourselves and don't be selfish, hundred percent. Be, be thinking of others like this isn't about our like we're okay we've got our high-speed internet you know i got a beer fridge over here i can reach over and get a beer for hey, you too i've got Lauren, lots of food what can i add that your your internet you must be paying more you must have upgraded since the last time it has not gone out and i saw the scotch or the is that scotch or whiskey it I is scotch 
I see it's gone down a little bit since the last call. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, it has. For sure it has. There's Pretty no fair. doubt that the, um, the, the beer drinking, scotch drinking Olympics uh, have hit the uh, uh, my home here. So we're, we're practicing. We're, we're, we're doing good. We're doing a lot of right, practice okay. uh, for the beer drinking and uh, scotch drinking Olympics. All right. Here we go to the Blue Jays. Uh, but uh, Matthew Meiser, baseball. Where can you? Uh, where else can you fail seven times out of ten and still be one of the best of all time? Uh, how true is that? Um, yeah, I would say to that too. I'm I'm really getting into the advanced analytics, doing a lot of uh, homework. I, I recommend anybody um, read Keith Law's book uh, about smart baseball uh, to learn more about uh, weighted runs created, um, defensive uh, zone ratings. Um, there, there's a lot behind the metrics, you know, when you start to look at baseball, but think about things like OPS, right, on base plus slugging. Start to look um, at numbers, and this is where I'm even being more critical of myself when I watch broadcasts. How are we truly defining players, you know, is truly the batting champion somebody who has the highest average, or is it that combination of on base percentage, being able to get a walk, get on, however, hit by pitch, um, and, and hit for power to that combination of multi, um, you know, uh, uh, extra base hits uh, over your 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 uh, your plate appearances and your at bats. I mean, these are areas where uh, myself, who came from more of where batting average was king, everybody wanted to hit 300, everybody, you know, aspired to be the next Ted Williams uh, to hit 400. Um, you know, John Olrood was very close to getting to those uh, those statures. Tony Gwynn, uh, Wade Boggs. These were individuals I came up, but I've learned more now that we start to analyze and Bill Jeans came around and is talking more about, you know, defensive uh, metrics and, and, and you think about war, right? Uh, wins above replacement. These are all very relevant metrics because it truly gets into, I'll call the more analytic side, analytical side of the game, but it actually gives you a better true output of what a player's true capabilities are. And it doesn't quite, you know, um, it doesn't take, uh, uh, I would call legacy statistics that were brought on through a bunch of journalists back in the early, you know, 1900s as paramount. What it's doing, it's recreating for the new generation, a great way to look at baseball. And if anybody's out there who wants a great analytic app or wants to look at something out of the park baseball, uh, 22, which is um, uh, sponsored by Major League Baseball and actually for hockey, it's all about running your own team and using advanced analytics. It's a, a fabulous app. I'm diving into it now. You can pick any era from, you know, back into the 1800s up until now. Pick your team and then run your team like you were in the front office. I, I find it fascinating. And I think these are the things that, um, you know, this young group of, um, of watchers want that analytical juice. They want, you know, the stat cast, right? They did those two broadcasts, the stat cast version. Um, I mean, there's so many different ways to go get uh, that information now. And yeah, it's just one that I'm digging in on, but I think it's just a fun way that we can, you know, start to become diving even deeper into our favorite players and learning, well, truly who, who does separate, you know, no different than Billy Bean and the Oakland A's did with Moneyball and how they tried to separate themselves. Although once again, Gooch, I'll say they had great pitching <laughs> and great pitching and great defense is how you win championships. And so, yeah. You know, you know, it's uh, it's just a little something that that I'm learning, uh, you know, and always learning about the game each and every day that I watch it. Where did it go? Show me the money. That's all I'm worried about. Let's not yeah. worry about anything else. Listen, John Larouche coming on saying Gooch goes 365. Baseball season's here. How difficult it is for a guy like me to get involved in baseball when I got the master right in front of me to make <laughs> me look good. I just I Google a little bit, throw some stuff out there, and I just let you run. So now let's run on the Blue Jays. Obviously, I was reading the – like I watch the games now, so it's not that I'm not taking part in it. Jays are 10-11, playing the Nats today at 8-11, and 11, basically looking like – uh, you know, the, the, the Jays are kind of in that mode of waiting for something bigger to happen. And, of course, it may happen. George Springer, is he coming onto the lineup? T. Oscar Hernandez, again, is another question mark. He's returning very, very closely. So these are key hitters, I would assume, for the Blue Jays. And then the question comes of Rowdy Telez. What's going to go on? If all those guys come back, where is he in the picture? So let's first... Talk about the the Blue Jays at 10 and 11. Are you comfortable mm -hmm. with that position? And now that the Calvary's coming, if you want to call it that, are the reinforcements with George Springer. How excited are Blue Jay fans about that? 
can't win it at the start, but you certainly can lose it at the start. They're 500 baseball. Um, you know, they've been on the road a lot, what, seven and eight on the road. They're only, they've only played six games at home, huge. So three and three, they're three and three at home. Um, Got to get back to your, you know, home confines in Dunedin. Um, a little bit of a launching pad. So one thing that I've always been very cognizant of is keeping the ball down there. So you're relying on your pitching staff uh, to, to get as many ground balls as possible. And that's where great defense comes in. And I guess we can argue and we can say that the left side of the defense has been a little bit shaky and it has um i i chalk that up to youth i chalk that up to gaining experience at positions i remember myself personally you know uh, moving over third base from second base it, it takes a while to learn that position to to understand the reaction kevin biggio has not had a lot of reps at third base please give this individual some time okay i'm not saying he's going to be the ultimate third baseman but boy these guys are young and even Bo, i i I still believe Marcus Simeon is better on the left side of the diamond and shortstop than Bo, but they've invested the brand in Bo, and they're going to give him as much runway as he can to be there. So, you know, I I, I I was concerned about the arm. I was concerned with a little bit of the defense, but, you know, when you hear Simeon talk and he raves about, you know, the athleticism of Bo Bichette, um, listen, this guy is so young too. So once again, a lot of confidence in both those players that both come from major league talent. I would say, Probably not until you're 26 or 27 sometimes. Does that really sink in? I, I, at least I know for myself, there were a few moments that, you know, you had to go through failure to, to move on. So uh, I, I'm looking for them to grow at the position. It's only going to help them. Springer coming back, uh, Teoscar coming back, uh, two important key cogs. Uh, really happy with Randall Gritchick, uh, you know, doing yeah, like he's done. Yeah, he, he's, he's really, uh, I'll say, anchored himself. He, he doesn't have to be the big... Um, he doesn't have to be the, the star to carry this team. There's a lot of other stars, if you want to call it. So I'm happy uh, for Randall. He's, he's a first-class individual, and he's got a place on this team. It, it's nice to have uh, a wealth of riches uh, to be able to play with when it comes to, uh, you know, this team hasn't really hit yet. And uh, they're still, look, if I look at the run differential, they're plus 11. You know, on the positive side, Boston's a plus 20. So, you know, they, their, their runs creating is working and they're keeping runs off the board. You look at their pitching staff up there, you know, top three in ERA. Very impressive. I mean, winning one nothing. I don't care uh, uh, who you are. You can't say in the history of watching the Blue Jays in Tampa, a one nothing victory. How many times do they lose that game in Tampa in the past? Mm -hmm. And to come out of there with a, a, a series win and, and to win one nothing like they did and to have – you know, you just saw the bullpen uh, kind of come through and you saw, you know, um, uh, Charlie Montoyo just kind of work his bullpen and work with uh, Pete Walker. I, I was really impressed. And and, and I got to hand it to bullpens. These guys recreate themselves year over year. And it's nice to see a bullpen, you know, a bunch of individuals step up. And I think that's something truly you can build off as you start to get that momentum in the back end of the bullpen. And, and once again, Gooch, fingers crossed, you need a lot of luck, but you need health um, to win it all. So you, you hope that they can uh, they can stay as healthy as possible. And you mentioned it best, and Val's brought it up, you know, a one nothing victory against Tampa. It's been their kryptonite over the years, right? Tampa's always been that team that takes advantage of of the miscues of the Toronto Blue Jays. Listen, and the other thing is that you mentioned too, that uh, again, sitting only three games back from the, the Boston Red Sox, who seem to be, uh, you know, playing at, at a top level. Uh, they're five and five in the last 10, which again, just keep close. You know, they're, they're keeping pace with some pretty good ball clubs. And that's without obviously Springer. How much is the Springer uh, factor? Uh, obviously, fans are excited about it, but that team in that clubhouse also, we've been waiting for this and waiting for this, and he's not going to be a distraction. He's already proven that, his personality, the way he's talked about just fitting in, which is great. You know, he's not coming in as a stud, or he is going to be the stud, let's be realistic, but he's not coming in with that attitude. And you know, and I know, playing, whether it's baseball, football, soccer, or hockey, uh, the, the, your lead players – they lead by example, but they don't create a division in the club. I'm excited about that. Am I spot on there? Do you see anything that Springer can do outside of, you know, you the club? Huh. I think he's going to solidify the top of the order. Uh, he, he should be in the leadoff position uh, for this uh, this team, which 
to me then just kind of slots uh the batting order the way you want it you can move you know uh, some are saying you move uh bowen a second i think that would be a nice fit for him um i think that'd be i think just having uh, not only the protection, because Bo can really, you know, I mean, he's had a little bit of struggles recently, but boy, I, I love the bat. The bat really plays. Um, you know, Vladdy's got off to a great start. I think all the questions around Vladdy and uh, now that he's come in shape and that uh, I really do believe he should stay at first base. I know people have said, hey, maybe move him back to third, see if you can get him back at third base. Mm, I, I don't know. Uh, like, I wouldn't want to cloud the man's mind. Not that he's, you know, that overly analytical. I think he's more of a feel player than anything. He's a reactionary player. Um, and I'm not saying he couldn't do it, but I just think when you've got him in his wheelhouse at first base, you leave him there. Um, I, I, I do firmly believe that Biggio is going to improve. I think you can you can um you know uh start to you can mix and match at third base even you know um espinal is kind of, i mean this guy's a defensive wizard i mean you watch him play uh you know the hot corner and you know surprisingly he's had a you know the bat has played as well too so uh i i think they have a nice um problem to deal with which is a you know an abundance of riches you don't have to have the best player at every position you just need to kind of slot into you know a lineup that works you want to get into some type of a rhythm and the fact that you've had as many injuries as you've had and you're still you know you're in third place or excuse me tied um for second place with tampa only three games back for boston one month into the season it's a nice place to, to be. You know, it gives you an ability to start to look into the market. You think about the trade deadline coming up in the middle of the season. You know, what type of assets do we want to get? Where do we want to shore up? Where do we maybe have, you know, needs? And and that's now what, you know, Ross Adkins, Mark Shapiro are looking at the scouting staff. You know, their their advanced scouts are checking out, you know, the the the, the other teams, players that maybe they have uh they think have an ability to differentiate. No different than what they did with the Stephen Matz, who's, you know, I know wins aren't that important for pitchers, but it's awfully nice to see him at a 4-0 record. Uh, but just pitching the way that everybody expected Stephen Matz to pitch, the former Met pitcher, you know, coming back and disproving other organizations. It reminds me of Jay Happ doing the same thing when he came over from Pittsburgh, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, Pete Walker, you know, that uh, the pitching whisperer, I call him. I mean, he's survived so many different regimes, but Pete Walker's been a constant from my days back in the booth with Jerry Howarth, uh, you know, calling the Blue Jays very impressed with Pete Walker and uh, you know and this coaching staff as well I, I think the Blue Jays boy they you know they re-upped uh, Ross Atkins for another five years I think it's uh, this, this organization they're, they're they're really looking to put something in place for the long haul and I think that's very important because you know this can be a destination when you're winning for free agents and it'd be nice to see them uh, you know like they did in the 90s make a you know make a serious run late 80s early 90s of playoff baseball every year. Yep. Hey, and listen, of course, uh, you know, the Yankees are not going to be where they're at. They're going to start put, doing a push, I think. Uh, you know, you don't hold a team like that down for the whole season. So obviously where the Blue Jays sit right now and having, you know, an inflection of, of obviously Springer and Hernandez is really going to help uh, elevate their their team and hopefully in the standings. But one of the things you, you mentioned about Vladdy, I, you know, we saw him last year. Uh, you know, he's got he's got the Gooch body last year. Now he's got your body this year. And what I find unbelievable, like, because I, I I envisioned Vladdy from last year. I didn't envision Vladdy of this year. Here's a picture I asked Val, and I'm so blessed to have Val Silva in 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 my making me look good. Look at the splits this guy. Can you have seen him do that last year? They would have needed a crane to get him off the ground like that. That's a no doubt. That's, Moore, you know, that's that's a let, uh, athleticism. Sorry, I've lost a tooth, so I'm kind of slurring there for a second. That is absolutely incredible by a big man. Yeah, it is. I I, uh, I made a transition during my career because I was a utility player. I'd be your your Joe Panic style now. Your Kevin Biggio, you know, play around the diamond, uh, you know play wherever you needed to that was the way that i played the game i played second i played third i played outfield i caught at the back half of my career right it, uh spent a good uh, amount of time catching at the back at the back half played first base as well too when i when i left the uh, tigers organization i went up to play in the remember uh teams in rochester the rochester and then the, the big gold eyes they gave yeah. them gold eyes uh you know 
something you know, like Thunder Bay. I had a great chance to play first base. It's, it, it takes a while to get the rhythm of first, uh, but once you do and you start to make it your own, I mean, he's got such good hands. And now that he's freed his body up, what it's done is it's given confidence in his legs and his strength in his legs and his athleticism play at the base because it allows him to start to do things like that, to get the stretch. Um, you know, we, we've had John Olru, we have Justin Smoke, I think, and Lyle Overbay. We've had some really defensive stalwarts at first base. And this could be a gold glove situation for many years to come for him. I, I would... Uh, I would be very, uh, very uh, uh, shocked if we didn't see uh, Vladimir uh, Guerrero Jr. as 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 a gold as a gold glove right first base. I really think he has the capability to to differentiate himself there. There were some doubters though, Warren. Of course, you know they they thought maybe uh, I think physical no, conditions. Good, good I, there was never a doubter for the bat. Never doubted. No, 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 no. Maybe but I mean, defensive, maybe defensively, but never for the back. No, but playing first base is is a crucial mm -hmm. uh, place for him to be. And and well, maybe there were doubters. Never for me. I mean, I. I no, no, I, no. I, made, I made that transition. It, it is. It, it's not easier, but it is easier than third base because you don't have that throw. Okay, yeah. you don't have to make the foot. You don't have to make that transition to the back end and make that long throw. You don't have to be as athletic. That you have to be athletic, but in a different way. It, yeah. You know, it's it's the difference between a goaltender's athleticism and a center uh, on a hockey team. They're they're both equally difficult positions, but it's a different dexterity to be a goaltender than it is to be uh, you know a, a forward uh, leading a rush. That's the type of difference I'm talking right. about. Which, yeah. And I'm not trying to say there weren't. I'm just saying nope. I never waned on Vladdy Jr. Yeah. Never. And, and it's been a good move, as as Val just mentioned. He started out the hot corner, the third base. And, of course, I think he's in his comfort zone. I think he looks really good there. Uh, listen, obviously, uh, we've only got a few more minutes with you. Uh, two games against the Nats. What are you looking for out of this series? Well, Scherzer, um, he's got a pretty good record against the Jays. I think his ERA is 2.0 in six games. I think he's 4-2 and two against the Jays is his record. Um, uh, listen, he's a beast, right? Like, that guy is a competitor like you'd love to have uh, Max Scherzer on your team you know from um, a pitching perspective uh, very 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 uh, interested to see what tonight brings he's um, you know his numbers right now he's got 1.8 uh, ERA already he's one and one record uh, Trent Thornton right um, he's done very well too I mean you got to look at his numbers he doesn't have a win on the board yet but once again it's not necessarily about pitcher wins it's a it's a um, you know it's a team effort to win a game so that's um, you know the uh, the first game and then Mats is going um you know game two um against you know what the pitcher i have not uh, heard of eric fetty before um be interested to see it looks like it should be a mismatch but um you know this is the washington team that uh, you know not that long ago 2019 world series champions yep. it's awfully difficult to repeat we saw that the dodgers won um it's awfully awfully difficult to stay at the top of the heap just based on you know the competitive nature and i'll call it you know more of an a leveling off right more of a you know uh, a balance within baseball right more of a competitive balance uh, where anybody really does have a chance to win tampa proves that year after year so you know I, I love it this this harkens back to my days of broadcasting the expos when bloody senior was playing and the blue jays and the expos were were playing against each other right in that uh, little cup they had i can't remember what the name of it was um uh, where they play off against each other i mean the, the nationals obviously were the uh, former expos and really i always have a, yeah i always have a a, a soft spot yeah, sure. for the yeah for the nationals so you know I, i'm excited I, i'd love to see some expo hats uh, uh ball caps they'll, they'll be out there. i'm sure they'll be out there yeah uh, uh maybe you peel uh, uh no obviously he'll be at the uh, Habs <laughs> game but uh we get that but uh anyhow um, i'm looking for some fun it, I, I still enjoy the interleague, even though we do see these teams all the time now. I still there's a little bit of uh, of a rivalry here that uh, still holds on. So looking forward to seeing that. It was the Pearson Cup. Thank you, Val. There you go, Pearson Cup. Yes, thanks, Val. I'm so blessed to have Val and, and Jordan in the background. When we say something, all of a sudden it pops <laughs> up like magic. And I, you know, a good leader wants to always take credit. No, no, that's not true. <laughs> it's not me. I'm not pulling these things up. <laughs> Listen, as we let you go, I got to touch on this one. Your Toronto Maple Leafs, Blue Jays. Uh, your Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, yes. Yes, my Maple Leafs. Well, listen, hey, uh, the ship is...
a really, really tough uh, run against Vancouver. I mean, you know, everything had it in the Leafs' favor. And sure enough, you know, this team that hasn't played, that, you know, the COVID ravaged, comes and surprises the Leafs. The goaltending was through the roof. Uh, yeah, well, I was super, yeah, I was yeah. super impressed with the way Vancouver played. I was like, well, wow. you know, they hey, went Warren, from, I ask, yeah. Warren, yeah. Warren, I want to ask you this because you, you, you're a pro player and I've been there. I'm sure you've been there. Was the fact that uh, Vancouver went through that COVID situation, maybe that galvanizing to the team, you know, us against the world type idea. So when the Toronto Maple Leafs were coming in, nobody gave them a chance, even though we know that Bo Horvat said, you know what, we're not here just to compete, we're here to win. And they should prove that. Have you been on teams like that where you, 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 you probably shouldn't have won because the team that was coming in, if they played the way they could, should beat us? But they galvanize together at the right time. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. You you crave that, right? Um, I think of the greatest athletes, Michael Jordan craved um a grudge, right? He craved and he would actually formulate a grudge or something that somebody would yeah. say. You know, that bulletin board material. Yeah. He would create that in his own mind. That was his way of ramping himself right. up. Very right? good. And, and 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 teams do that. And, and and no doubt that that was a huge galvanizer. And listen, uh, I mean, the schedule was thrown off. There was a bit of delay in when they were going to play, right? It was supposed to be Saturday, then it was Sunday. But now the lease bounced back. And, you know, I know everybody's concerned. I do think Freddie's going to be okay, um, you know, come playoff time. I'm sure he'll probably go down, you know, um, you know, to the Marlies uh, when they ramp up to get some playing time before the playoffs start. I think he's getting a long break here. Um, you know, I, I obviously haven't seen a lot of the uh, the new backup uh, goalie, but uh, I, I, you know me, I, I, I've been a big fan of Jack Campbell. I, I, I think he's, you know, I won't say he's, um, he's overthought it sometimes, but I think he, you know, he had that great run. And then I think he got into a bit of a funk, you know, after, you know, and, and, and that's okay. Right. You bounce back and that's, that's, that's what puts you out on the stage, right? It isn't always going to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, rosy out there. So you've got to figure your way out of a bit of a trough. And I think this team, you know, with Felino now coming in with a bit more grit, you know, you see Muzzin, I I've seen more block shots, than I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, uh, I watched Muzzin the other night. He was blocking shots. So was that gnarly so Joe Thornton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, look. How about that battle? Hey, eh? like he Ehlers. He was like he wanted to come over out of the yeah. penalty box to get Ehlers. I, I, well, I, I loved it. Like this. This is now starting to get good for me in terms of what I'm seeing, a bit of this grit uh, and determination. And it's exactly why, uh, you know, the front office went out and uh, and got some players like this. You, I, I learned it. I've listened to enough uh, puckheads tell me you can't get to the final dance without players who just know how to grind and get it done, you know, in the dirty spots and in the toughest points uh, of a playoff series. And and there's no doubt that, uh, you know, if you, if you line yourself with too many sharpshooters that are prima donnas, um, you know, it's not a recipe to win, to win a championship. Well, and you know that obviously playing no. the game that you played. Listen, just ending it with the fact that uh, Jack Campbell, you got to give him full marks. He, yeah. he, you know, reached the high pinnacle, fell off a little bit. You know, he's really hard on himself. He talked a lot in the press, yeah. did a lot of things, which, you know, you know, maybe he should, somebody should have said, I don't, I don't understand how their media guys couldn't be pulling them back a touch saying, okay, Jack, don't be so hard on yourself, especially uh, uh, outside. But he came back. He played incredible against my Winnipeg Jets, which uh, I don't feel comfortable about. I'm <laughs> I'm really nervous. I'll be honest right now. Yeah. I've been hard on the Toronto Maple Leaf goaltending situation. I'm a little concerned of what I see going on in Winnipeg, losing Ehlers. Also, uh, the, the, where I thought the Toronto Maple Leafs were going to suffer, I'm now sitting with that. And I'm full marks to the Toronto Maple Leafs. They look very good right at a particular time when they need to be. Let's see where their goaltending brings them. If Jack can get back, if Anderson can, you know, sneak himself back into that lineup, uh, you never know everything. You've got an incredible front uh, nine players there. I think uh, Keith's going to have to struggle with 12 with four lines. Who's he <laughs> taking out? Is he taking Joe out? Is he taking Kerfoot out? Uh, you know, where is he moving all these parts? That can become an issue. Don't forget that can create divide in the dressing room. So there's a lot more questions to come, but where the Toronto Maple Leafs are, and I know you're happy about it right at this particular moment. And are you looking forward to, as of last night, I think the Montreal Canadiens have shored up fourth spot by beating 
um, uh, the Calgary uh, Flames. Are you looking forward to a Toronto Montreal just <laughs> as in baseball for the Pearson Cup? Yeah, uh, was it? Uh, player he got his first uh did he play last night i think was a youngster got his um uh, debut last oh, night yeah mm -hmm. yes yeah they talked to yeah so i listen i i love it right i got a lot of friends that are habs fans um i love the rivalry grew up on it um i mean there's no better i've uh, been in that building uh to see those two teams play uh whether back at only Leaf gardens i never got to the old uh forum in montreal but uh Centre Bell. i've been to the Centre Bell never for a Never for a Habs Leafs game. Um, that's a tough ticket to come by. But uh, I've sat up in the nosebleeds and watched the game. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think uh, I know they talk about next season they're going to go back to more of a normal schedule. I, I do get it. Gosh, I would love to see um, you know more of the Canadian content. I hope they figure out a way uh, to keep some regionalization around that. I think it's. I personally think it's important. But you know, listen, what we think and what we care about as Canadians, uh, you know, the TV rights and the almighty dollar in the U.S. are what drive yeah, it. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, enjoy it while we got it. Yeah. You know what? Warren, I can't thank you enough. Uh, coming on to uh, Gooch Live, obviously, uh, lunch with Gooch and friends. You are one of my top friends, and I'm honored to have you as our baseball correspondent because who knows baseball like Warren Saku? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> well, thank you, Gooch. I uh, look forward. Enjoy the Jays game tonight. And uh, yeah, and uh, the playoff push for the hockey. We'll chat soon, Gooch. We'll Thanks, talk to you next Thanks, week. Pal. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thanks, buddy. How great is that? He knows his baseball. There's no question about it. Hey, listen, I want to do a thank you to uh, Val and Jordan. Guys, you always make it uh, so seem so easy. So I uh, want to thank you for that. Listen, you've been watching Gooch Live here. I know we went a little bit onto the baseball for you all because we want to be round, uh, all rounded. Uh, Gooch Live Productions, along with Val, Jordan, and James uh, and Ryan, we're really putting on an effort to bring you more as we sit through this lockup. And, of course, lunch with Gooch Live. We're just waiting for our chicken wings to come in from uh, our buddy uh, – uh, Wayne Cowley at the bottom line. So as of next week, I know Jordan's moving into the city. Uh, he's going to be our Uber driver. He's going to go pick him up. He didn't know that. He now knows it. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, Jordan, Al. Hey. Jordan, do you have a driver's license? You're going to have to go pick up the chicken wings. They're ready. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> all right, well, guys. Well, he's definitely dropping them off, dropping them off at my place. That's for sure. First, he, that'll be. We'll make the circuit. Hey, listen, uh, great show this afternoon uh, with uh, the Rosa Report. I will see you there, Jordan. We'll be talking hockey, uh, of course, and I really look forward to uh, tomorrow's show. Uh, don't forget uh, Wellness Wednesday at seven o'clock with Pete Bumpachi. We got Randy Thomas. We already had him on specifically for obviously his role in as. Toe Blake uh, in the rocket, uh, but we'll be talking about him as an actor and all the mental uh, issues that actors are going through. Uh, obviously, we watched the the Oscars the other night. Uh, one of the things their numbers plummeted, like they were, I think, at fifty eight percent over last year. We want to know what's going on with that, and you'll hear that on Wellness Wednesday tomorrow night. Okay, guys, thank you for joining us. You've been watching Gooch Live, lunch with Gooch and friends right here on the Hockey News and Sports Illustrated. See you, everyone. You've been listening to Gooch Live with your host, Kerry Goulet, better known as The Gooch, brought to you by the Hockey News and Sports Illustrated. <laughs>